Hey folks, it's Chad here with Airstream of Greensboro. Uh, we got the sign right there. We're right out front. We're going to have a little bit of road noise, but it shouldn't be too bad. I've got behind me the 2024 International 27 front bed with the queen bed option and the hatch, which I'm super excited to show you. So let's jump into a walk around of the inside, the outside, the top and the bottom. Let's get started now. Now, as I walk into this International 27 front bed, one of the things I want to talk about, of course, is the door. I love talking about the door um, in pretty much every video for a couple of reasons. I don't necessarily know who has watched uh, one of my videos before, but the door, so it's going to take about eight hours for Airstream uh, to actually build this door because they do build it pretty much by hand. Um, they're going to build this inner screen to match this door so that they, they work really well together. And also, I like to point out the welds here in the frames. And the part of why I point these out is just because of how consistent they always are. And from Airstream to Airstream, it doesn't matter. These welds seem to always be immaculate. And that's something I think that just really speaks to the build quality for Airstream. It speaks to the materials for Airstream. You're gonna see aluminum everywhere. So this is an extruded aluminum here for the door frame. You've got aluminum for the door itself. So these are gonna be materials that just last forever. Now for 2024, we've got a new latch latch system. I'm guessing that we're gonna be able to get these at some point um, for our existing trailers. Cause I know for one, I would like to have this latch on my flying cloud. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that way. Now we don't have a new handle. If you check out the trade winds, which I haven't gotten one in yet to be able to make a video, they did put a new handle on it. But currently this is the handle mechanism that we are using for Airstream and that's everything but the trade winds. You'll see that kind of as we have an opportunity to show it. Now on the International, you're gonna have these really nice aluminum screens that kind of protect both the top and the bottom right there. I like that. Now the door itself, is pretty much just a blank slate. So you can absolutely add things. And I've seen some really cool decals uh, on the Facebook groups of people who have added things to the door to kind of make it look a little bit nicer, especially when you've got this, this door, part of the door open, and then the screen shut. That's just showing right out to everybody at the campsite. So that's something um, to note. Yeah, that means it's a clean slate. Now, one thing you always want to do before you shut this door is to marry these two guys, these two doors back together before you shut it. And of course, if you've never shut an Airstream door, you should do it. Come to Airstream in Greensboro, shut a door. They call it the vault door of the RV industry. And that is uh, for good reason. We're also gonna have that Airstream aluminum step. And as a step, I pretty much think that Airstream is the only one that is using this step uh, on anything currently. It's a great step. Now it doesn't have that, um, you know, the solid steps that Grand Design and some of the other manufacturers are using. It doesn't have that feel, does have a little bit of give when you step on it. But to me, I like how it kind of, when it's stored, it's just out of the way. It goes right up into the underneath of the camper. I like that a lot. Now stepping into the International, we're gonna see um, kind of a light airy feel to this unit um, with the design and color choices. Now, when you're picking out a, your, I guess your colors, for the international uh, really all you're picking is the cushion color everything else is going to be pretty much the same now there's two options with the international i'll pop those up on the screen uh, for you to be able to see that so you're going to have the aqua what's what which is what this unit is and then there's seashell is the other option which is going to be kind of a gray cushion now kind of looking at the dinette area since this is the hatch setup the table is going to be unique now, I just did a video uh, that shows the Flying Cloud versus the International versus the Globetrotter. This is actually the, the RV, the Airstream from that video. So if you're interested in those comparisons, I'll link that up above so you can check that out. But if you don't have the hatch, this table here is going to be like what you see in the Flying Cloud. It's attached to the back there, and then it can kind of go up and down depending on how you need, you know, whether you're using it as a bed or using it as a dinette. Now, this one's going to have legs here because... 
that door opens, they can attach the uh, this table itself to the door. Now, otherwise, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to open the door very well. So this will come up. You can actually remove this all the way. So if you want to use that as storage, you can. Now, there is a spot in the closet for these poles to go to. So you can stow those away and then put the table down when you're traveling. If you want to use this uh, as kind of a garage area. And that was really, for Airstream, the initial design for the hatch was, the, uh, I think the Eddie Bauer was one they used it where they actually made it kind of a garage setup. Now, one of the iconic things I think about Airstream right now is going to be this fantastic panoramic view. And then we've got even more windows to bring in light here. Uh, just, I love the amount of light that comes into an Airstream. Now, above the dinette area, we're going to find the JL Audio sound system. This is a great sounding uh, sound system. You're going to have two speakers below, one there, and then one right there. We're also going to have two speakers in the same location, but above the bed in the front. They do have these cool little puck lights here that are LED. That is going to be new for 2024. Um, the cushions are going to be a little bit more comfortable for 2024. Now, one big change for 24 on the International and really all of the Airstreams outside of the Bambi is the added Cat 6 data port here that goes to the outside. And I'll show you on the outside where that goes. But this is going to allow you to run data and power over it using power over Ethernet uh, for something like the Starlink um, Internet system. You actually use this port to get Starlink outside. They also give you an inverted circuit here. Remember, for 2024, we've upgraded the inverter from 1,000 watts to 2,000 watts. There's also a USB right there. And then we also, Airstream decided to move the control for the HD antenna. Power is right there now, so you can turn that on and off for both. Your TV's right there. And there's a little pass-through. That's just to get to the back of the radio. Now, the storage up here in the Flying Cloud, I mean Flying Cloud, the International, uh, it's great storage. You're going to have these sliding doors here as opposed to the doors that come down with the soft clothes on the Flying Cloud or like the rounded doors on the Globetrotter. It is backlit, and there is a switch just over here. These switches here are going to control the backlighting for um, the cabinet as well as your lights over top. Your ceiling lights, there's, they are dimmable as well. That's going to be the powered awning controls right there. And then your battery quick disconnect is right there. Now there is some storage underneath the dinette right here. And there's also a little bit of storage right back in here. You could actually use that for, um, for shoes or something like that if you wanted to. And then just under this part of the dinette, there's another storage area right there. Now that right there is going to go back into the furnace area. It's kind of the intake for the, the propane furnace. We've got some more storage underneath right here. And that's going to be these containers here come with it, come with the Airstream as well. Now right here is going to be a pullout, and I'll demonstrate how this works in a second. But that's going to make into a bed there because the 27 foot, they say sleeps six. And I would say it does sleep six, two adults and four kids. And then probably four adults. Um, I would say it would be a stretch to put uh, six adults in here, especially with the hatch, because that does take up a little bit of room. Now, the curtains right here are going to pull around. Right there, they pull around. And then you've got these really nice pull-down shades. Two spots. The first spot's going to be right there. Let's a little bit of light in. And then you can go down to right there, and it kind of just hooks in right here. And then put those away. They just kind of go up. Now, trick here, if you ever have it where it kind of gets off kiltered like that, you're just going to take it and pull it back to the middle, and then it will go back up correctly, like so. Right there, I don't want that to come off. Fix that real quick. All right, and then there are shades that pull up right here. This is that old accordion-style shade right there, and then there is a max air vent here that is also has the rain sensor which i really like uh, it is also upgraded if you remember with really the dometics i think there was an issue with um all of the brackets right here breaking this max air vent has been upgraded significantly built stronger there i can see um so quite improved there but has the rain sensor 
All the little buttons are right here as far as opening it and so forth. I really like that. I wish they would put that in the flying cloud as well, but you only get that uh, in international and above. Of course, we have LED lights above as well. And then with the windows, these are very unique windows to Airstream. Uh, Airstream makes these windows in-house. Now the glass, they buy that, and that's manufactured. They buy that and bring it in, but they make the frames themselves. Even um, this ex extruded aluminum here for the the screen and then these screens can come out it's just a it's just like any other screen door the way that works now there's basically three levels and if you look kind of in there you'll see the first level there the second one there in the middle and then one at the very top because these windows will open almost 90 degrees now to open them you're going to unlatch this latch here and then turn it to the left and then the other one you're going to unlatch and turn it to the right and then now we can basically, it takes two hands, I've only got one hand, but you're going to pull this up. Oh, hey. And it will go all the way. I can't get it quite to the top. We're right there to the middle. Looks like I can get there with one hand. It's much easier to do with two hands, but you can see, you know, really how much air can come in when you're using the Airstream windows. Take that all the way back to the bottom. And then to latch them back, you're going to take it, bring it up. And then you're going to push it in, and it actually is going to pull that window into the seal. Which is one of the things I really like about Airstreams. Um, the seal, like the windows seal really well. And all of your windows that open are going to open in that fashion. Now we do have a screen to pull down and cover this window here. And then there's an additional screen that comes down that's more of a bug screen for that large hatch that will open all the way up in the back. I'm going to turn around. We're going to take a look at the kitchen now. Uh, let me get the camera. There we go. All right. So with the kitchen, we're going to have a Corian countertop here with the international. There's a really nice sink cover. And we're going to have a really nice um, stainless steel, stainless steel undermounted sink. It's a square style sink. We move that so we can see the colors. And then you're going to have a unique faucet for the international that does have a pull down right there so you're able to pull that down and then wash things out uh, in the sink and then right here we're going to have our trash can trash can storage and then there's a little bit more storage kind of around this right here is kind of protecting the hose for the sink faucet right there and then in the front we're going to have more storage lots of storage so there's like you really you're not missing storage. To be honest, honestly, with with my flying cloud, uh, 25 foot, uh, my wife and I are just like we have more storage than we need. Great cut, uh, cutlery, cut, cutlery, silverware organizer. I'm trying to use fancy words. I'm a simple man. And three pullouts here, full extension, and then there's going to be one that just folds down. Same thing here that just folds down. A little bit of storage there. And we're going to have the convection microwave option right here. Now, if you choose to not go with the convection, you can have a traditional oven here, propane oven. And then in the top part of your pantry is going to be a microwave. Since this one has the convection, we're going to have a full pantry here, which is a massive pantry. I mean, it's just massive. You can see how deep that is. And then above that is going to be an additional storage area. Great for your cereal or your boxes, those types of things. Now we do have a vent that does vent outside as well as an additional light. And then we're going to have a three burner stovetop right here up top. I like this one better than the Globetrotter. Uh, we get this on the Flying Cloud in the International. Now the best looking one is oddly uh, in the Caravelle and the Classic. For some reason they get the same uh, uh, stovetop. And then we're going to have kind of our control station here. So that's going to be your solar charge controller if you decide to get the solar option. Then we're going to have our controls for our 2000 watt inverter. That's progressive dynamics. We've got a power plug right here. And then we're going to have our sea level uh, monitor system that would give you. It's not going to really give you much on batteries because you've got lithium batteries on board on this one. But it will show you fresh gray and black. And then you can turn your water pump on and off right here as well. I love the port windows, especially with this setup that the windows are on the side, uh, the campsite side of the RV. Um, you can look out while you're doing dishes, things like that. I would like a floor plan 
I guess it's probably the 28 RB, which will put these large windows on the campsite side as opposed to the non-campsite side. Uh, we don't have that quite yet, but it would be cool if we had that. And then we are going to have a 12-volt smart TV that has things like Netflix, Prime Video. Most likely we'll have all of your other apps as well. And then just below that, you're going to have one of your two GE controllers or uh, thermostats for your AC systems. We also have another inverted circuit right there and then your plugs uh, and 12-volt plug or cable for your TV. And now one of the big upgrades for 2024 is going to be the new ACs. So it's going to be a, a GE AC. I have a whole video talking about that. I'll link that above. We have a new controller too. And now this has two ACs. That's an option to get the second AC. It has both of them. This main one is going to be a 15,000 BTU. And then the one in the bedroom there is going to be a 13.5. And then these are fully ducted. So both ACs are ducted into that Airstream ducted system. We're also going to have a whole new roof line for 2024. I have a video about that as well. And I'll link that above. But it's uh, new ribs on the inside. They're going to be a stamped rib instead of a hand or a aluminum screwed and welded rib. It's going to be a stamped rib, which should give us more consistency in the build quality of the Airstream. But it also allows for a seamless roof that goes up and around. And watch that video because it talks about it there. And then I'll show the roof here at the end and I'll point that out as well. Now we're going to have our power box here below. Now if you... It's most likely going to have lithium from the factory now. That's an option. A lot of ours are going to already have the lithium, but if it doesn't, you've got to make sure that your charge, con your converter and your solar charge controller is set to whatever type of battery that you have. Now, this is going to have an 8 cubic put foot refrigerator. It is a 12 volt refrigerator. Airstream has been doing that for a bit now. Now, these things are amazing. I wish I had one in my camper. Uh, this thing will cool down in about 45 minutes. It's 12 volt, it's, it's, it is more efficient technically than the old propane refrigerators because the draw on this is the same amount off the battery as the propane refrigerators when they were using propane and this has no propane. So with lithium battery, you should be able to go for, especially with solar, at least a week uh, with this refrigerator. Now, of course you could use up that battery pretty quick if you're using an inverter, but if you're just using lights and keeping the refrigerator cold, you should be able to go for a good bit uh, off of those 200, 200 amp hours worth of lithium batteries. Now there's a little bit of storage above, and this door, of course, doesn't, um, doesn't have anything to hold it up. Now, I've got a video that I'm working on that I found the solution to make this door stay up when you open it. So make sure you have subscribed to the channel because I'll be posting that as soon as I can uh, on how to keep that door open. I found an awesome mechanism that will do that. Now, as we move back a little bit, we're going to go to our double wardrobe with the 27 foot. It is, does have a light. Now those bars I was talking about that hold the table up, this is where you're going to connect those or stow those away when you are traveling or you're not using them. And it's a great double wardrobe. And then with the queen bed, and this is the queen bed option. If you choose to have the queen bed, you're not going to have the extra wardrobes that would be right here. And then, uh, going across over here as well. You get those only on the twin bed, but you do have some really nice um, nightstands on both sides, which I'll show just in, in just a second. So let's go to the shower now. And of course, I am going to oh, show you the shower. Let's see. Oh. That out. Okay, let's see here. Let me step in. We're kind of leaning towards the back, but now I can tell you this from experience because I do own a flying cloud now. I made a video we posted about that, uh, my wife and I, and you can meet my, my pup, Rosie, which she's the whole point of watching the video. I'll link that above. But I've taken a shower in the shower of a flying cloud 25 foot. So I can testify or can tell you from experience Yes, you can take a shower in here, and you guys know from the videos, I'm not a small person. I'm I'm a large, I'm a pretty large guy. I had no problem taking a shower in here with the door shut. Uh, of course, you'd want the door shut. You get water everywhere, so there's plenty of room to take a shower. Now I'm I'm about five ten, probably five eleven, with my shoes on. I still got a couple of inches above me here, and there is a seat. So if you're really tall, the seat is not for shaving your legs. Um, which I, I'm sure you could probably use it for that, but it's really for tall people to be able to sit down while you're taking a shower 
um, and have enough room there uh, to take the shower. Now, as far as the bathroom goes, one of the things I really like about the International, you're gonna have this really nice porthole window here for the bathroom area. Now, going into that area, we're gonna have some great storage underneath the sink there. Then you're gonna have the stainless steel uh, surface mounted sink. You'll have a unique um, faucet for the bathroom area. Now this is gonna have the tankless Gerard hot water heater. That's the control for that. Now what's different about this system is instead of mixing your uh, hot water and cold water, you're gonna actually um, set that to the temperature that you want your shower to be at. Now your old school tank water heaters, you would still do some mixing. You would have, you would kind of mix the hot and cold at the faucet, but on the drawer, you're just gonna set this to the temperature that you want it. Start at 121, 121 degrees, and then kind of go up and down from there. Now we're gonna have the sink here. You can see the new camera that I'm still figuring out how to use. Uh, the mirror, I said sink, the mirror. And then behind that, we're gonna have some storage right there. I wish they would add a shelf right here. I'm sure that could be a good DIY project. And then there's some nice storage right there. Some con good containers would be good for that. You do have an exhaust fan for the bathroom area as well as one in the shower area. Uh, we're gonna have some more power right there. We got a nice towel rack here and then another towel rack right there. Now, as far as room for the potty position, there's plenty of room to use the potty in uh, this flying cloud. You can close the door, that's not a problem. I will say my leg does hit here. Now I do like how the toilet paper holder is right there. So it's fairly easy to get to when you are using the bathroom. Now I like to just go to the bathhouse, makes it a lot easier and you don't have to worry as much about dumping the tanks, but uh, to each his own, right? Now there is a spot, a way to separate this area. There's a curtain that pulls across. You can create an ensuite, suite or if you wanna kinda of do both of those spots, you can do that as well by um, pulling the other curtain and then kind of have a spot here in the middle. Moving to the bedroom area, we do have some boxes in here. Now, one of the things that we choose to do here at Airstream in Greensboro, we generally don't put out the comforter and pillows until you buy the unit. Now, that way, you don't necessarily have random people laying on your comforters or laying on your pillows. All the mattresses and the pillows stay, you know, the pillows that are not in the box, those are gonna stay in their plastics um, to be protected. So just something to kind of note if you're like, oh man, they don't, they don't even put out their, their pillows. They're so lazy. It's, it's not so much that. Uh, it's more so we got feedback that people really like to keep that stuff packaged away. And then you're buying a brand new Airstream, you want it to be brand new. Now there is some storage under the bed here. Let me see if I can lift this up with one hand. Yep. So we've got some great storage in here. You are able to access the front from right there. You can also access the sides from each side. There's a cutout there. There is some, some additional storage right there. And you've got a pin, pin pan, pan bucket thing to pull out here. <laughs> you, know, you know, I'm from the South. We forget how to say stuff. And then you've got your outside storage there. And then that's completely sealed. And that's part of why it's kind of opened. Um, to the RV, but that is also a great spot for batteries if you wanted to add additional batteries. Now, as far as like charge controllers, solar, that kind of stuff, that's going to be stored essentially up in this area here and up in that area there. So your inverters, charge controllers, your 12 volt um, distribution area, all of that's going to kind of be in those two areas there, but some great storage under the queen bed and it does have shocks, which I really like. Let me put this down. And then we do have the nightstands on each side. There's good storage underneath there. And then you can see that access under the bed. And of course we have great nightstands above. Now we're gonna have um, 110 outlets here, as well as two USB. You have a USB-C now and USB type A. That is an improvement for 2024. We've got again, Great storage above with those fantastic sliding doors and it being backlit as well. Now, air vents in here, as well as your intake for your second AC. There's a filter up in there as well. And then your light switches for the lights in here. This top one is going to be your overhead lights, which are dimmable. And then that bottom one is going to be the light that is in the dinette. Now, this TV is also 12 volt. 
and uh, it does have the ability to be moved around. This TV, you can pull it out into the middle here if you need to. You cannot do that on the front TV. Only on the Globetrotter is the front TV, does the front TV have a telescoping arm. And this is going to be your other controller for the GEAC. That's going to be the one that is actually in the bedroom. We have the other power plugs right there. Your power in USB. There's also an inverted circuit here in the event that you need to have um, your any equipment that you might need at night powered while you're boondocking. Now we have this window here that opens. It also doubles as your emergency window. The window straight back or straight front opens. And then this top window here also opens. So you have a ton of windows that open, a ton of windows that let light in. Uh, I absolutely love with Airstream just how many windows that you have. Now let's move back to the front. Just kind of looking around. I think I've showed everything there is to show. Um, there's skylights. There's a skylight right there. And then there's a skylight here so you can get lo lots of light in during the day uh, when you are chilling in your Airstream. Yeah. I think that's everything as far as the inside of the 2024 International 27 front bed. So let's jump to the outside, do a quick walk around of the outside. Because let's be real, the outside of Airstreams pretty much all look the same. There is some unique things with the 2024 model year. So you do want to watch that. And then we'll look at the roof and we'll look underneath. All right, let's go. All right, so let's jump on to the outside of the International 27 front bed. Now, it's an Airstream, right? You cannot deny an Airstream when you see one. Um, they pretty much all look the same, right? So we've got the solar guards. That center one is going to open. We've got the rock guards. Now, that's going to be stainless steel, uh, where everything else out here is going to be aluminum. It's an Alcoa aluminum. There is a clear coat on that aluminum there. So if you're wondering, like, what do I need to do to maintain it? It's really washing it with a wax-based wa wax soap. There is a polish called Womanizer that is kind of famous to the Airstreams. Uh, that will kind of protect it, but also bring some shine back to it. But for the most part, you shouldn't have much of an issue with maintaining that shine because it has that clear coat on it. Even the stretched parts there, which is really cool how they make that. If you've never watched uh, the uh, tour of the factory that Airstream has or been to the factory, you actually see them doing that. And this is crazy press that comes up out of the ground that stretches that to create that corner there. It's really neat to watch. Now up here at the front, just underneath, we're gonna have our spare tire right there. And you can also see the manual stabilizer as well. And then that's gonna be the latch mechanism right there to get the tire down. We also have a solar uh, input there. Now that's gonna be for like a suitcase uh, charger that will let you um, put power into the batteries um, you got to have a charge controller on it already because that's basically connected directly to the battery. Now that's where you're going to turn your battery heater on if you are using the Battleborn battery heaters. Now, the top here, we're going to have our two Battleborn 100 amp hour batteries. These are from the factory. You can see the new massive cables that are almost comical that they've added for the 2000 watt inverter. And then the breakers are right there as well. Or fuses, I guess that's what that's going to be is a fuse. That big black one is going to be the fuse for the ton power ton jack. And then this does have the power ton jack. That is standard on the Airstreams. You can bring it up and down. There's also a light here for when you're hitching. You've got the Demco. It's really cool uh, hitch system here. It's an easy latch. It's easy to open and close. And then... You don't even have to open this to actually latch it down. As it's dropping down onto the camper, as long as the ball is forward enough, it will latch itself right in place. Now that's going to be two five eighth, two five sixteenth inch ball is what you're going to use with that. And then of course you've got your chains and places for those to connect. Now coming around to this side, we're going to have our low pressure um, LP connection right there. Quick disconnect. And then with this being the queen bed the only outside storage that we're going to have is going to be right here at the front and we also have our 50 amp power cable really good storage here lots of outside storage but i will say the twin bed you get more storage again watch that video where i compare the twin bed to the queen bed 
Now this is gonna have the powered zip the only, which is a really nice upgrade to some, and then to some they would rather just have the manual zip the only. Now this is gonna come on the international, you're gonna get this really nice umbrella awning fabric that you can put it away when it is wet. I still recommend at some point trying to get it out and dry it, but technically speaking, you can put that away wet and it won't you know, rot and that kind of stuff. We're gonna see our Girard tankless hot water heater right here, as well as some power, 110 power outlet to the outside. Now with your axles here, this is gonna be a Dexter torsion system axle. Um, very minimal maintenance to it, really none. The bearing that they use for that is a never or no maintenance bearing that will last, well, probably forever. I mean, as far as own ownership, um, it's very similar to what you get with your vehicles. That the bearing that they have there is a sealed bearing. There's no maintenance. Now it's a torsion system. They're completely independent. You're also gonna have this damper that is right there. Um, let me see if I can show the, yeah, you can kind of see the Dexter axle there. So there's no leaf springs, it's independent. With the center of gravity being so low on an Airstream and this uh, axle setup, these things tow absolutely incredible. And that's the, the Gerard tankless hot water heater. Not so much to do there. And then moving to the back. Now, this is your vent that will vent to the outside. You do have to open that up and close it when you're not using it. Open it when you are using it. Then we'll move around to the back here. I'm gonna demonstrate the awning real quick. Open this door all the way. And we wanna leave the power switch on the whole time we're using it. All I've gotta do is press open. Oh, I'll turn the power off. You gotta have power on. The battery disconnect right there, I turned that off. We're gonna hit open. Now this is running off of the, the batteries. There is a new spring for 2024 for the powered awning. Works really well. Now this thing will sometimes stop. If it stops while it's coming out, just go ahead and hit um, the close button and then hit open again and it will start to open again. Now I'm letting this run kind of real time so you can see how long it will take uh, as it goes out. You can see I love the color of this awning. So I can get a good shot of the colors. Now, as it comes out, it's gonna start lifting right here on this part here and bringing the awning up into the air. Now, remember, the awnings on the Airstream and really all awnings are sun shades. They are not rain protectors. They're not weather protectors. They're sun shades. So you absolutely wanna put this away if it starts to rain any. And if you have any breeze, just, just put it away. There's not any protection or anything to do it for you. That's something that we've gotta do. We've gotta kind of, you know, pick up on the rain. If you ever leave the campsite, put it away. Uh, never leave the campsite with that open. Uh, now, as far as putting it away, you're just gonna hit the close button. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna show you, you can tilt it forward and you can tilt it to the rear. So you can tilt, tilt it to the front or to the rear. Again, that's just for sun. Now, close it, we're just gonna hit close. Now, usually when I'm demonstrating these, it will stop on me at least once. So let's see if this one goes all the way without ever, without stopping and me having to start it again. That's going, I mean, it looks like it's gonna make it. You can see that's also lowering as it's going back. Yeah, all right, we're gonna make it. I don't wanna jinx it. There's an LED light strip that goes all the way across. And then you've got your protected aluminum. <laughs> it worked. That's a, I think that's the first video I've ever made with the power zip the awning that it didn't um, stop while I was trying to demonstrate the awning. Okay, shut the door. And we're gonna continue around to the back. You got LED brake lights. All of your marker lights are gonna be LED as well. We've got the standard window awnings for the International. And you're gonna pull it, pull it out just by hand. It's not, it's, not, um, it's not powered or anything. And then those little arms right there are gonna go up to that point right there. It's just really hard to do that with one hand holding the camera and then one hand doing everything else. Now the door, this hatch door is no joke. Um, I will say 
Uh, that latch there is a little bit, to me, difficult to open. It's just kind of the nature of what it is. I do like how they add this really nice step pad to the top of the bumper here. Under this bumper, you're just gonna have a little bit of what we call wet storage, right there. And then that's gonna latch down like that, and then right there. Now to open this door, you're gonna take this handle and turn it all the way around, so that's gonna... Oh, I gotta unlock, okay, so right there, you're gonna turn it and then turn it one more time to get it to unlatch, or to latch. It's unlatched currently, and it's actually kind of hard to even do it with one hand. And then it's gonna open up, and now you just have this massive opening to the world outside. And of course, you've got the screen that comes down right there to protect you from the elements or the bugs, I should say. Now, if you want air to come in, you wanna be able to bring as much outside air into your RV the hatch is probably going to be the way to go. But you can just kind of see what it might be like. Now, don't imagine Interstate 40 right there in the video. Imagine, you know, the Rockies or the Blue Ridge Mountains or, uh, you know, the, the Myrtle Beach. Or the, well, let's not say Myrtle Beach, that's too dangerous. We'll say the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Like that being what you see outside of your, your hatch there. I mean, it's just, it is really cool. I have, to, I have to admit, that is really cool. Shut that door back. And then to close it, you're just going to pull here, and I'll show you kind of the latching mechanism right there. And then that's just going to go into essentially a hole that they drilled into the aluminum there. That is, that's how that works. Now, there is a handle on the inside if you're wondering. Can you open it from the inside? If it's unlocked, you can, but if it's locked, you are not able to unlock it from the inside and then open it. So you have to unlock it on the outside right there. And it is, if you're wondering, it is a whole nother key. So you have four keys with this one instead of three. We'll move around. You got the furnace right there. We're gonna see some of the tanks right there. You can see the underneath of the international water tanks gonna be right there between the two axles now we're gonna have our 50 amp power smart plug power you're gonna have about 20 percent more metal to metal contact with this particular plug um, that's gonna help reduce the heat that's transferred as you're making that connection this is also extremely easy to plug in and unplug I love the smart plug it's one of the upgrades I want to do to my camper I think it would be worth it. Um, you know, remember, if you are ever wanting to install a 50 amp plug at the house, this is not a dryer style plug. It's very specific to the Airstream, so or to RVs, I should say. So make sure you tell your electrician that you want an RV plug, not a range plug or a dryer plug. Now this is a new plug for 2024. We didn't used to have the smart plug here. We have it now. This is gonna have your AV input, for your coax TV or uh, satellite. And beside it is gonna be your CAC-6 data port that will carry power, as one of my viewers reminded me or taught me. The DC there is referring to the PoE power over ethernet. That is there to be able to run things like Starlink. We've got our black tank flush. Remember to use it or you lose it. So every time you go camping, before you leave, flush that black tank. And I like to do black tank flush gray tank that's how that's how i like to do it then you got your city inlet this does have a pressure regulator built in so you do not want to use an additional pressure regulator it'll actually mess up or prevent the water heater from turning on because it won't have enough pressure to turn on and then we're going to have our potable water fill oh, right oh, 751 grab that key so potable water fill right there. It's just gravity fed. There's a breather right there. And then beside it is gonna be your outside shower. And this is a very traditional RV outside shower. Honestly, nothing special about it. it does have hot and cold water. And then just under that area is gonna be your gray and black tank dump. There is a little light there that you can turn on if it's nighttime and you need to run out and dump. 
uh, you can do that. So black and gray tank. Remember black and then gray. And if it's your last time dumping, black, black, black tank flush and then gray. We also have a spot to store your sewer hose uh, right there for traveling. Uh, that's just going to be your stinky hose. There's a good place to store it there. And then you have your tanks. That's your gray tank right there and your black tank right there. And then your freshwater tank is going to be in between those two axles to kind of put some of the weight over the axles themselves. And then standard on the International is going to be this window awning here as well. On the Flying Cloud, that's an option. On the International Glow Trotter, Pottery Barn Classic, that's a standard. Uh, it's going to match the fabric of the awning on the other side, the campsite awning. So that is the outside of the International 2024, International 27 front bed. Let me grab a ladder and we'll go up top and take a look at the top. All right, folks, we're at the top of the International 2024, International 27 FB, right there with the Airstream and Greensboro logo. That's kind of cool. All right, so let's take a look at the top of the International. So two ACs, and we're going to see the 13.5 there, and then the 15K is right there in the back. And then you're going to have the white baked on enamel coating here at the top, which is a uh, really nice thing. Like even today, the sun's out right now. I can touch this no problem. You're going to have one of your vents. That's probably for the shower right there. And we've got one of our skylights. That little dish looking thing is going to be your HD antenna. I'm going to zoom in right there. Yeah, HD antenna is right there. And then one of your solar panels is right there. Now, is there room for additional solar panel? You betcha. There's plenty of room. You could definitely put at least another 100 watt right here in this spot, which I'd love Airstream to do that in the future. Maybe 2025, make it 400 watts instead of 300 watts. That'd be really cool to see. So let's go to the other side and check it out from the back. All right, so we're on the back of it now. We've got the fantastic fan right there. We've got one of our three solar panels and the third one's gonna be up there towards the front. And then your skylight is right there, but there's plenty of room to add additional solar up here if you wanted to. Airstream could easily put six panels. We know there's six panels on the trade winds and this is 25 foot. So there's plenty of room up here uh, to be able to add another uh, couple of solar panels if you wanted to. Uh, the connection for the solar is gonna be right there in the middle. I think you can see it right there in the middle uh, that's going to have three inputs all three inputs are being used by the three solar panels if you've got to this point of the video thank you for watching i really do appreciate everyone who watches those videos uh, everyone who subscribes and likes and comments below uh, the good ones and even the bad ones i uh, just appreciate the community with airstream now if you have any questions about this 27 front bend international feel free to reach out uh, feel free to come by Airstream in Greensboro. We have an incredible team here. We're the oldest running Airstream dealer in the country. Uh, we would love to help you find your next.